Hello and welcome and to my regulars. Sorry, I haven't been around here for a while. That's uh, a mix of unfortunate reasons. I got COVID, my wife got COVID, and happy reasons were away on holiday. So uh, not sure what the frequency of posting is going to be like for the next while, but uh, it's FMWC weekend this weekend, so I couldn't resist uh, coming back for something. Uh, so I just had a look at the question guide and we've got a Jason Weber question this weekend. I couldn't discern a whole lot about what it's going to be about, something, something, electricity, something, uh, but I thought I would have a go at the last Jason Weber question from February last year to see if I, and by extension all of us, can get inside Jason's head before this round. Um, so let me let me give you a quick tour. Uh, the idea is pretty simple. You've got uh, a person who's leaving a bequest of five million dollars uh, that they want to use to fund uh, scholarships for students over the long term. So they're basically going to take take the money, put it into a long term investment account uh, that will earn twelve percent a year. <sighs> Amazing. <laughs> uh, compounded twice a year. Um, disperse some portion of the capital and some portion of the interest uh, that it earns every year um, and keep the rest kind of in the investment account with the idea that you know it'll grow faster than the uh, than the annual growth in the cost of education which we're told is eight uh, percent so that you know you'll be able to for fund more bursaries over the longer term uh, and then the the dispersals from that the capital and interest that come out of that every year go into a separate bursary account so this is like your kind of short-term account uh, that just yields a 2% interest compounded monthly. Um, and then from that account, we basically pay for people to go to school. Uh, and so there's different costs for each year that they're in school. These are the 2021 costs, and then it goes up by that 8% per year. Um, and part of the part of the sort of spirit of the bursary is you want to kind of get uh, a diverse group of people together and the way they want to achieve that is by having at least half of the bursaries funded in any given year go to boarding students. So there's an additional $20,000 cost per year uh, for a for a student to board, I live in the school. Uh, so it's got to be at least 50%. It doesn't mention that here, but it does mention it in the case description. So, you know, if, if in a year you're funding three bursaries, then two of them will be boarding and one will be uh, day people. Um, and I think that's that's basically it. So let's dive on in with a model, uh, M O D E L. Uh, so we've got a start date of uh, Jan twenty one. Uh, so I actually built a monthly model of this um, because I saw you know this compounds twice a month, this compounds monthly, and so on. But actually, if you if you look at it carefully, it and sorry, one thing I should have spelled out is uh, this is. Um, school year is on the same as the calendar year so you know you fund a student for for a given calendar year um and so the the bursary account only pays out at the start of the year the long-term investment account only transfers to the bursary account at the end of the year and so actually it's fine to have an annual model i just didn't uh, didn't appreciate that when i was building it on the day uh so then we can go from here uh can I do this? Let's see. If, if I do start there and then I'll do sequence, uh, I want 49 years, so 49 columns. Uh, start is 1 and, uh, sorry, start is 12 and step is 12. Um, uh, okay. Back to black. Okay. And yeah, that worked. Good. Uh, and then I don't know if I'll need it, but just in case I'll put in a year end uh, and that can just be you a month that uh, 11. So 11 months later and at the end of the month, it's the 31st of December. Uh, and as usual, I've hidden everything after the last column so I don't have to kind of look further over there. Uh, and I'll get rid of my grid lines. Hmm. And then I'm, yeah, about ready to go. So let's start with the long term account. Uh, which should be pretty simple. We've got um, opening uh, interest earned interest blah, interest dis dispersed dispersed. I think it's dispersed. It is dispersed. Uh, showering myself in glory here. Uh, and then capital dispersed. And then closing. Uh, so this one is basically standalone. So the opening balance is the initial bequest. Uh, and I'll just format all my numbers uh, like this. 
that's how I like my numbers to be, and make that red because it's a different formula from the rest, and all the other opening balances are just going to be the previous closing, copy across. Uh, oh, let's freeze panes so that we can keep that in view. Uh, so then my interest earned is going to be, uh, actually let me just, in both of my interest places because they're uh, compounding different numbers of times per year, I'm going to just I'm going to add effective rate. And that's just going to be uh, 1 plus the rate, uh, sorry, the rate divided by the number of compounding periods to the power of the number of compounding periods minus 1. So in other words, a 12% rate compounding twice a year is going to end up being a 12.36% rate. And same thing down here. Actually, I could have copied that whole line. The effective rate here is going to be just a little bit over 2% uh, when it's compounding monthly. Okay, so then my interest earned is just going to be that opening balance times my effective interest rate. Then my interest dispersed is going to be minus this times my dispersal rate for interest, which is that 75%. And then this is going to be minus capital, opening capital, times 3% dispersal rate there. And sum it up. And then we just copy all of these across. Uh, and that's that account. So then we need our bursary account. So this one's going to be a little more complicated. I'm going to set it up as opening um, dispersal. Uh, <laughs> And we'll do existing uh, students. And then I'll do a subtotal, which is going to be basically whatever we start with plus the dispersal. Uh, actually, no, sorry, the dispersal. So this, this is one thing that I do trip over a little bit here. So the dispersal happens at the end of the year here. So it'll come in at the end here. Uh, so that any dispersal that we get in this year won't be available for this year. It'll have to go into next year. So uh, opening existing students. So we'll say available for new students. Uh, and then there's a whole formula, which I'll explain in a second, about how you figure out how many new students you can afford. Um, and then uh, and then dispersal, uh, sorry, available for new students, and then uh, new students, uh, dispersal, and closing. So how much of this can we do? Well, the opening, oops, the opening we can certainly do. That's zero. Oh, I'm going to copy this format. And just fill that down a couple more. Mm, sorry. So that's a hard coded zero. Uh, then existing students will have to do some calculations on the students, then available for new students. It's going to be the sum of those two. Uh, new students dispersal and closing. Uh, and the dispersal I can also do. That's just going to be minus the sum of these two pieces here. Um, Oh, and sorry, I have not done interest. So interest, uh, like the dispersal, that's going to come in at the end. Yes, because we, again, all students start on the 1st of January. So any interest that you earn in the account over the year uh, won't. Mm, actually, so I'll, sorry, I'll need to put it in before the dispersal. Uh, so then uh, balance uh, opening after payments. And that's going to be the basis on which I calculate the interest. Then I'll have the interest, the dispersal, and the closing will then uh, add that up. So, so that's going to be that. The interest is going to be the opening after payments times the effective interest rate. Uh, the dispersal is going to be the dispersal. And then we're going to sum up uh, those three. And then the opening here, carry on from there. Everything else will carry on from there. And like that. Okay, so now we need to figure out how many students we have and all that fun stuff. So again, I'm just going to copy down. There's a hard code zero. Uh, there's no existing students at the start, so we're only interested in new students there. And obviously in the first year, we have no money available for new students because the investment account doesn't disperse for the first time until the end of the year. Uh, so now let's do students. Well, actually, let's do education costs. Uh, so first we'll do the education price index. Uh, and again, we'll start off with uh, a fixed one, uh, and then we'll say this times one plus the EPI, and carry that across, and there. So, if I just zip down so you can actually see all the way, so by the end it's going to be 
40 times more expensive to educate a student. Yikes, 8% a year over 50 years will do a lot. Is that right? 8% a year means it should double about every nine years means it should... Yeah, that is about right. Okay. Um, so then I've got here my year one, two, three, four, five costs. So let's just uh, plug that in. Uh, that's just going to be this times this. So you can see in the first year, it's just exactly the inputs, and then it goes up by 8% a year after that. Uh, and then boarding, we'll do the same thing. Uh, if it's, let's see, one, two, three rows below. So if I just temporarily insert two rows here, then I can just copy that formula down. Mm, no, it didn't work. Why not? Sorry, two blank rows, not three blank rows. Okay. And then I'm going to get rid of that. That was just a convenience to copy that formula down. Okay. Um, so then what I'm interested in is to figure out how many students we can afford to fund. We're told, uh, let me just pull that up so I don't get it wrong here. Uh, we're told that we're interested in the weighted average five-year cost. Um, so you consider for, for the current year's prices, what would it cost for five years? So that's, you know, your first two years at the inflated version of this, your second two years, the inflated version of this. So in other words, just the total of this for that year. Uh, so that's that. And then half of the cost of boarding for five years, because half of your students board for five years. So weighted average five year. Uh, it's just going to be some of these plus five times this times the minimum proportion, which is that 50%. Let me copy that across. Uh, so that's going to let us figure out how many students we enroll. Uh, and that's going to be the money available for new students divided by the weighted average five-year cost. And then we're going to round that uh, down because we never fund more students than we can afford. So we're going to round down to zero decimal places. Uh, and sorry, this I want this line to be the cost of new students, not the number of new students. So let me put in a separate student section. Uh, students. Total new students. And I'll take that from there and put it down here. because That's where I want it to be. Uh, and then if I just copy that across quickly, now we can see with the first year dispersal of about 600,000. We have 600,000 available for new students. That's uh, more than four times the weighted average cost of a student, so we'd enroll four students. Now, obviously, we just keep adding up because we haven't started taking it out here yet, but for the first year that works. Uh, let me just also copy this format here because I want my zeros to be zeros, or I want my zeros to be dashes, I should say. Uh, so that's total new students, and then we're told at least 50% have to be boarders. So boarders, uh, yeah, let's do this. Uh, borders do uh, I'll take it from here so your one is going to be round up this times so we have to enroll in at least 50% so if oops sorry comma zero uh, and I'll take that format again so we have to enroll at least 50%. So if this were a five, then we'd be enrolling three boarders and two day pupils. Uh, and then let's take this. Uh, oops, I'm going to point that back to the original. Uh, and then this is going to be that minus that. So two and four. And then for each subsequent year, again, I'm just going to take my, uh, my red zero our code from up here, so we don't have any uh, students starting off. And by the way, the case assumptions state, you know, because the school is so amazing, all students uh, matriculate through each year and complete every year. So that's uh, that's why we've got this assumption that basically everything carries on forever. Um, and I'll just take this and do the same thing down here and I'll carry that across. So now you can see whoever starts at the start, works the way all the way through. Um, then let's see, let's see, let's see. So 
uh, now I can fill in my cost of my existing students. That's going to be uh, some product of... Uh, actually, does it make sense to do one of these tables for total students? Mm, it does. I think it does. I don't know. There, there's always... A, I always feel a little bit of, uh, you know, tension in my heart about how, you know, terse I want to make my model. Sometimes I prefer to uh, have it have as few lines and rows as possible, but in most cases I think my instincts are probably a little too tight on that. So let's just do the same thing here. Put that down there. Take this. Put it up here. Carry that across. Okay, so then my cost of existing students is going to be uh, cost of the total, and again, I'm not including year one students because those are the new part. Uh, I need to think about that separately. Uh, otherwise, I'll create a circular reference. So it's some product of the total number of students times uh, the cost of each of their years plus uh, the total number of boarding students, again, not including year one, uh, times the cost of boarding. And obviously that needs a minus sign uh, on each of the two parts. So let's see. Yes, now I have 100,000 coming out. That makes sense. Uh, so then we want to think about new students. Uh, and new students is going to be... Uh, it's going to be the first years. So total new students. Sorry, again with a minus sign. Total new students times the cost of first year minus the number of boarders times the cost of boarding. So nothing in the very first year, and then 97,200, which is, uh, let's just quickly double check, we've got four times that plus two times that. Yes, 97,200, looks good. Carry it across. Um, and I think I don't know, it feels a little anticlimactic, but I think maybe we're done. So let's just have a quick look at the question. There's a couple of scenario questions that I'm not going to do now, just to, not to make this video too long. I'll quickly explain how to do them. Um, but I think aside from that, uh, hang on, this, this looks extremely suspect. Uh, why are these not carrying on down to here? Ah, yes, because at some point I cut just the first few from here and pasted down there. So. That's a whoops, but that's why you look at your model and sense check. Uh, and then we'll fill that across. That looks a little more sensible. So we enroll four the first year, then seven, then seven, then five. And then we start to use the money up, I guess. Then we get another wave at some point. Okay, the behavior looks a little strange, but it's not totally implausible. So, yeah, so you start to spend the money down, then you save a bit. Okay. That, Seems to be working roughly fine. I'm going to have a quick look at some of the questions. I'm not going to go through every single one of them, but let's just take a quick look, see if I haven't totally broken it. Which calendar year did the first students enroll in the school? Uh, and so that should be 2022. And it is. Uh, forecast interest disbursement in the first year, 463,500. And it is. Good. Uh, total capital dispersed in the long-term investment account. Uh, I get 7667782. That's good. Closing cash balance in the long-term account at the end of the period, 5230033, yes. Total value of deposits received in the bursary account, uh, which, do, 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 dispersal, 3136128228, yes, good. Forecast annual school fee for year four in 2026. Year four, 2026, 220, no, sorry. Oh, this one, yes, 22040. Uh, all right, I'll do one more, and then I think we're good. Uh, weighted five-year average school fee, including boarding, uh, in 2030. 244878. All right, so I think we're basically working here. Uh, all right. Uh, yeah, good enough. All right, so... Like I said, I have no idea if this has any similarity whatsoever to uh, to the question Jason has set for this weekend. It's about electricity, so presumably not all that much, but... 
If this helps you get inside his mind, if it helps me get inside his mind, then maybe we'll all do a little better this weekend. Who knows? Uh, if you're having a go, good luck. If you're not having a go, you should probably think about having a go. It's uh, it's a very good way to develop your skills. And I will see you next I may, if I have the energy, come back with another video tomorrow on a Dan Mayo question, because Dan Mayo also has a question this weekend, but I'm not promising that. Uh, we'll see, see how much spare time I have. All right. Thanks for watching, and good luck.